general public, to the motoring public, if you will. And they were always full of less than savory characters. One description would be uh, wall-to-wall shoulders, fellows with no necks dragging their knuckles on the ground. Um, refrigerators on casters, if you want images. Now, at a certain point, do you notice uh, different kinds of people coming into the theater than those you'd normally expect? Well, if you're saying that uh, a fellow in an $800 silk suit selling popcorn is strange, yeah, I think so. There are types like that, and uh, it, it seemed very obvious to me that uh, the element that was doing some of the jobs in and about the theater was not uh, from your best finishing school, can we put it that way. The Mafia sold Westchester shares at an inflated price, while at the same time stealing the theater's profits. Nine million dollars disappeared into the pockets of the Gambino and Genovese crime families. They also used the theater as a front for other rackets. They were using it for a uh, dump site to do their work. They were actually moving jewelry, they were actually moving paintings, you know, the scalp tickets everybody talks about. There was all kinds of shenanigans going on through that joint, and it was a meeting joint. And things were getting dropped there, picked up, deals were going down there. I had a deal, I went over there uh, to buy Romanian money at 10 cents on a dollar, millions of dollars worth of it. And I had bearer bonds, and I couldn't get the feds to come up with the money to buy the bearer bonds, so I had to give them back. <laughs> this was the, the way it went. Uh, we were doing the Nutcracker, I guess second or third year in operation, and it was a nice performance by a local but professional ballet company. And at one point, uh, in the first act, I had left backstage and come out here in the lobby where we're standing and gone up through the doors over there just to check the scenery lighting and just the general picture of what it was looking like from the house. While I was standing on the stairs, one of these security guards who was, not that I'm petite, but a good deal larger than I am, came up behind me and said, nice show, Jerry, really nice. I said, yeah, it's a good show. And he said, uh, Jerry, uh, there's no talking in this? Which... <laughs> Obviously, the man hadn't seen too many ballets, so I turned around and said no, and they could have saved a lot of money if they got taller dancers in the first place rather than have everyone stand on their toes. And that went right over his head, and he said, yeah, and he went away. <laughs> the right guys didn't go to jail. You look at the guys posing with Sinatra, they're all who were involved in that damn play. None of them went to jail for the Westchester Premier Theater. Just slugs went to jail. And that's, that's what slugs do. They go to jail. I'd like to introduce the founder of our entire organization, Mr. Joseph Colombo Sr. Joe Colombo, real estate broker, mafia boss, and one of the biggest conmen in the history of organized crime. Colombo founded the Italian-American Civil Rights League to hoodwink all Americans into believing the mafia did not exist. Colombo played on the feelings of Italian Americans who felt tainted by the Mafia image and discriminated against by the American government. The president is knocking us down, the vice president. The attorney general makes our guts. And I don't care who hears it, who knows it, who's here tonight, is ashamed to hear it, no one thing. There's prejudice against the Italian Americans. There's a conspiracy in this country against you, the people. Right. Don't. Joe Colombo used all the tricks of a politician. The mafioso portrayed himself as a father, not a godfather. A family man who swore he wasn't in the family. In 1970, he was named Man of the Year by the organization he had himself founded. To the FBI, the man of the year was the same gang boss they had been trying to jail for a decade. It was the FBI's investigations which provoked Colombo into founding the Civil Rights League in the first place. It was started in Cantalupo Realty Company. For years, we were being harassed by the FBI. For years. For, I, probably when I wasn't even in the office. From 1964 to 1969, we were constantly under surveillance by the FBI, actually harassed. They watched you. They walked in front of the office. They took your pictures. They followed you everywhere you went. A constant harassment, which was hard for a man like Colombo to conduct his business, his illegal business, out of the office or anywhere, because all his 
mobster friends would be coming into the office, they'd be taking pictures of them. So they knew something was going on. So there came a point where Joe Colombo Jr. 